Welcome to worship at Zion today as we continue our time together. Our opening hymn is number 269. We are still in the season of Christmas, and so we sing this Christmas hymn once in Royal David City. in royal David city stood a lowly cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed Mary was that mother mild Jesus Christ her little child came down to earth from heaven who is God and Lord of all and his shelter was a stable and his cradle was a stall with the poor and meek and lowly lived on earth our Savior last shall see him through his own redeeming love for that child so dear and gentle is our Lord in heaven above leads his children on to the place where he is gone not in that poor lowly stable with the oxen standing by we shall see him but in heaven set at god's right hand on high there his children gather round bright like stars with glory
thank you for sharing that song with us and leading us as we uh, continue our worship. I would ask our ushers to wait upon us as we share our offerings. And I have a couple of announcements I'd like to bring to your attention. In the uh, bulletin, you may have a little slip that looks like this. It's, it's for a blood drive that will be taking place here in a couple of weeks, January 15th. It's a Friday. And my thought about donating blood is if you've got an extra pint, some of us do, then share it and you will save a few lives. And so it's a good thing to do. Um, one trick I learned after the first time I donated blood and fainted. <laughs> it was not a great experience, um, but, I, but I learned after that to just continue breathing, just kind of like, and it feels so good. It's good to breathe, and, uh, and that helped me. A couple of other uh, brief notes here. Our annual meeting, our church's annual meeting will be held on Sunday, January 24th, so three weeks from today, and there will be no 1045 service, so sorry about that. We just have our 830 service that day, and then we stay in here for the annual meeting, and uh, that is a good thing. It kind of, it's a time to review where we've been over the past year and what we will uh, have as our focus for the coming Thank you very much. What we will, uh, what, what our focus will be for the upcoming year. So we look forward to that. Also, uh, the poinsettias around the altar, and there's a couple up by the tree. If you would like to take one home today, please take it. And uh, if you know of somebody who might enjoy a flower, uh, take it now so that people can actually enjoy it. And you can share. Take two, take three. They're small. Um, and it's a good day for transporting flowers. So we continue our worship at this time as we have received the offerings for our prayer of the day. It is printed in the worship folder. Let us pray. O oh God, our Redeemer, you created light that we might live, and you illumine our world with your beloved Son. By your Spirit, comfort us in all darkness and turn us toward the light of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this Sunday is uh, found in chapter 31 of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah described the future restoration of Israel in this chapter. Who heard could not relate to what he prophesied. The king and the people of Judah continued to ignore him. And we begin by reading the first 14 verses. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they will be my people. This is what the Lord says. The people who survive the sword will find favor in the wilderness. I will come to live or give rest to Israel. The Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. I will build you up again, and you, virgin Israel, will be rebuilt. Again, you will take up your timbrels and go out to dance with the joyful. Again, you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria. The farmers will plant them and enjoy their fruit. There will be a day when watchmen cry out on the hills of Ephraim, come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is what the Lord says. Sing with joy for Jacob. Shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your praises heard and say, Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. 
Among them will be the blind and the lame, expectant mothers and women in labor. A great throng will return. They will come with weeping. They will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble, because I am Israel's father, and Ephraim is my firstborn son. Hear the word of the Lord, you nations. Proclaim it in distant coastlands. He who scattered Israel will gather them and will watch over his flock like a shepherd. For the Lord will deliver Jacob and redeem them from the land of who, those stronger than they. They will come and shout for joy on the heights of Zion. They will rejoice in the bounty of the Lord. The grain, the new wine, and the olive oil, the young of the flocks and herds, they will be like a well-watered garden. They will sorrow no more. Then young women will dance and be glad, young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into gladness. I will give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow. I will satisfy the priest with abundance, and my people will be filled with my bounty, declares the Lord. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Here Paul prayed that the Ephesians would continue to grow in their relationship to God and their understanding of their Christian faith. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of what the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect with the times, when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the pain plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. In order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing their inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. To the praise of his glory. This is God's word. Thanks be to God. Thank you, John. We take a moment to pray. Gracious God, you have given us your word, and we ask that you would help us to find that your word is uh, something that can uphold us in all times of life and support us and strengthen us, that your word really does hold us together as individuals and as a community of faith. We ask that you would encourage us always that you would help us to be drawn to your word and that we would come to know you more and more each day as we live in Jesus' life-giving name, we pray. Amen. So I have this fantastic thing here on, my, on the uh, pulpit, and those of you who are experts in things of the world have probably seen something like this before. In case you're not familiar, it's called a bookend. And I'm going to show you now how this works. Because bookends are fantastic things. I have this 
theological journal that I subscribe to. It's called Word and World. This issue is about war. War seems to never go away, but I hang on to it, and so I'm going to put it here for my... Oh, here, I know. <laughs> Turn it around. That's what's going to help. So you would think I've done this at 8.30. You'd think I would have caught on by now. But, oh, wait, here. I have two. And if I go like this. Ooh. Didn't see that coming, did you? So I could have just gone on with that other thing all day long, just to be a little bit irritating. So this is, this is a theological journal, but I find that it will hold other kinds of books too. I've got a nice little children's book here. It's called Sleepy Jesus, a little Christmas story, fantastic artwork. So I'm going to put that in here too and see if these two very different kinds of books can be held together by these bookends. It appears it works. And then I've got this daily devotional book here. It's in our home. If you like daily devotions, we've got some, I think, back on the usher's table or out in the, that plastic rack out in the hallway. But this will hold that kind of book too. Keep that on the end so I can get at it every day. Here's a book I, I don't need to get at ever again. But it's kind of neat. It's all Norwegian. It's a Norwegian catechism. I can't read it. That's why I don't really need it. But it's kind of neat. So I'm going to put that over here. I've got a hunch I know what's in the catechism, even though it's in Norwegian. This is the Lutheran Magazine, January 2016. Little articles about life in the church and what our church is doing. Not this, the, the larger church. So I'm going to put that over here. See, in any order I put these in, it just seems to work. The bookends do what the bookends are supposed to do. Here's a favorite of mine, and soon to be a favorite of yours as well, I'm sure. It's uh, Chronological and Thematic Charts of Philosophies and Philosophers. Pretty fantastic. See, and I can put the big books next to the small ones. And I can put the old Norwegian catechism next to the philosophy book. Here's a novel. Have you ever heard of the story, My Friend Flicka? That's an old, old story. This is a novel written by the author of My Friend Flicka, Mary O'Hara, Green Grass of Wyoming. Have you read that? You have? Oh, wow. I picked this up at the uh, library book sale and haven't read it yet but I will put that right here. All different sizes, all different kinds of books. Here's a songbook, Sunday school songs. Might do some of those one day. And then our men's breakfast and Bible study group just finished reading the book of Proverbs. And so here is a commentary on the book of Proverbs. Very useful for looking at things. Now see, that's kind of a motley assortment of books, isn't it? Quite a variety, different sizes, different types. And you think that I've had so much fun here putting them up in these little book uh, ends that why would I even be so enamored with this? Um, it's not a big deal if these six or eight or ten books would just all be laying down. It's not a big deal if I didn't own any of them at all. Really not a big deal. What is a bigger deal is when people fall apart, when people fall down, when people who are supposed to be together are not together very well. That's where it makes a difference. And as we look at these bookends, they have a very specific purpose. You don't use them for just anything. If I wanted to make a house payment, I would not use one of these bookends. The bank would not be real impressed. If I wanted to get from here to Woodbury some afternoon, 
I would not ride one of these bookends. It would not be very useful for that. All the bookends do is hold these books together. I could put 20 more books in there. I could have fewer. God wants to hold us together. And there are times when things do fall apart for us too. There are times when things don't go as well, perhaps, as we would like. But I think that our scripture readings help us with some very specific things today, bookends of sorts. And so I'm going to say that I will start out with my basic belief that God actually cares. God cares about everything. The shape of the galaxies, the shape of the universe. God cares about your life and mine. God cares about the world we live in. God cares about people who are not here. God cares about people who are lost and losing. God cares about the high and the low. God cares about the vast array of humanity, all different types of people, all different shapes and sizes, kind of like this stack of books. God holds us together. The Bible readings for today show the heart of God, and I believe we see a caring heart of God. The reading from Jeremiah chapter 31 is, is to me, is a very interesting and very insightful reading. The book of Jeremiah is kind of a difficult read in some ways. It's not, it's not all bright and sunny, but these words from Jeremiah 31 are kind of like that ray of sunshine on a cloudy day. That's what I was looking at here. Uh, kind of like a flower blooming out in the desert. These words from Jeremiah 31 stand out as an amazing different kind of reflection from what we see in a lot of the rest of the, the book of Jeremiah. So looking at these words again, I have two suggestions. First, look for descriptions of God's character as we read these. A few things that I pulled out of these verses. From verse 3, it says, God's love is everlasting forever. That's God's love. And also in verse 3, God's unfailing kindness calls out to us. In verse 4, God promises that he will build us up again, whether as individuals or as a group, as a, as a church. Um, verse 7, the Lord saves his people. Verse 8, God will gather his people who have been scattered. He's talking throughout Jeremiah to a people who have just been torn apart, a nation that has completely been lost. And God gives the promise that he will gather his people together. Verse 9, God will comfort, God will guide. Verse 9 again, God is like a loving father to his children. Verse 10, God watches over his people like a shepherd. Verse 13, God says, I will turn their mourning into gladness. I will give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow. Here's where my second suggestion comes in as you're looking at these words. If you do this again this week, maybe circle the word will in, in this thing. Um, what will God do? God will do this. God will do that. And everything here in Jeremiah 31, what God is going to do is good stuff. That's what God will do. Verse 14, God will satisfy the needs of his people. Sometimes a word like that jumps out at you and it tells you a lot about God or it tells you a lot about yourself. If we believe that God actually cares about us, then I think words like this can really make sense for how we live our lives. This can fortify us in weaker times. It refers to those weaker times in that reading from Jeremiah and can also lead to renewed faith in God. Faith, then, leads us into a closer relationship with God. The, 
the, the life of faith that grows wants to find more and looks for more and, and is kind of hungry for that relationship with God. And then it says that God can bring us joy. Not everything in life is joyful. But God knows what to do. Well, as we look back over the past week or so, our worship services, we sang joy to the world and we sang a lot of other joy-filled kind of songs and hope-filled kinds of songs. We saw how the shepherds were filled with joy when they had uh, heard what the angels had told them and when they actually saw the little baby lying in a manger in Bethlehem. Great joy comes out of Christ coming into our world. Faith, I believe, can serve as one of these bookends, so to speak, of life, kind of to hold things together. But as we saw earlier, one bookend is not always enough. Okay? It's helpful to have another bookend. So, faith is part of that. In our other Bible readings, for, uh, reading for today from Ephesians 1, it starts out with a song of joy. The first words there, praise be to God. It's like a song uh, that, that uh, the Apostle Paul, I don't, I'm guessing the Apostle Paul was not a very good singer. I have no reason to believe that, but I just, let's say he wasn't. <laughs> he could still sing a great song of praise. Praise be to God. Here again, we see that God really cares. In fact, the care goes beyond just words for the Apostle Paul, and it goes beyond just words for how God comes into our world. It involves a real process of God actually taking us, taking a hold of us, and not letting go. It uses the word adoption. Now, I am not adopted, and I, we have not adopted children, so I don't know exactly how this process works. But I believe that the one who is adopted is not in control of the situation. That somebody else says, I will take you into my home. I will take you into my life, and I will give you everything that I am. That is, I think, the heart of adoption, that it is it is built on a love that has not been experienced yet. And so God actually adopts us as his children before we even knew him. That's how the process of adoption works. In Ephesians 1.5 it says, God destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the word, the good pleasure of his will. We are destined. The word predestined comes out of this too. And the predestination means that it's a, it's a destination that was determined beforehand. Okay, so our destination, according to God's will, is to be with God. That is our destination. In life and in death, and in the new life, our destination for the short haul and for the long term, in fact, for all eternity, our destination, God has determined, is going to be with him. Why? Why would God do that? Because God loves us. That's it. Plain and simple, God knows us, and in spite of what God knows, he loves us. We are God's children because God said so. That's it. End of argument. God said so. And that's the way God wants it, because God loves us. And if this was all set in place long before any of us were even born. We certainly do not control God's grace. God is graceful to whom God is graceful. We receive this gift through Christ who came before us, who first loved us, who saved us with his lifeblood. As Elaine introduced that song earlier, it's a, 
it's a kind of a Christmas tune, and the words are an invitation to the Holy Supper of Holy Communion. God gives us salvation through his actions, who gave us the truth of his word and the promised Holy Spirit. And so we receive this new life because God loves us. So the book ends. Here we are, quite a mixed bag of people, our 830 crew, our 940 Family Connect crew, our 1045 crew, and there's others who are here and there are others who are not. We are all unique individuals. I think that's an amazing thing. I, I don't think a, a church that is made up of all the same people is a healthy church. So really, the, the crazier we are, <laughs> the better we are as a church. And I believe that God brings us together for a reason. And as we look at ourselves, maybe we can't even figure out our own lives. Don't try to figure out somebody else, but be grateful for the people around you because we are unique and that is an amazing thing that God has done for us. No two people are exactly the same, kind of like this image. I don't know if this worked for you or not. This image of these books and the bookends, none of them are the same. Some are quite different from the others, but this is a good thing. Sometimes in life, if one person says green, the other person may say orange. Aren't you glad I didn't say yellow? <laughs> Whatever. Um, if one person says right, the other person may say left. But God has brought us together as brothers and sisters in Christ. The bookends that hold us together, whether it's holding our individual life together or holding us together as a community, is faith and love. That's the way I see it in today's readings anyway. Good bookends to hold things together. Faith always draws us towards God. And God always calls us out of his great and eternal love. Good bookends to hold things together. In the reading from Ephesians today, we hear about this love and grace and forgiveness. And through these things, we experience the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not just words anymore, but it is lives, our lives, dedicated to Christ, and through Christ, we become dedicated to one another. This is the gospel of our salvation, as we hear in Ephesians 1, verse 13, the good news that we are released from the divisive ways of the world to live for Christ, to live in love. It is in Jesus' life-giving name that we live. It is in his life-giving name that we pray. Amen. Holy Communion. And as we do, we confess our sins in the front portion of our hymnal, page 94. And as we confess these sins, we hear the good news of God's forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us, we confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown. 
things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And a communion prayer and response is written on page 110. And so we pray. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your Son, Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we receive Holy Communion today, Jesus invites you, all of us, to receive this gift of his grace. And so everyone is welcome to this table. If you abstain from alcohol, the center ring of each tray is prepared for you. And if you prefer a gluten-free wafer, they are in the glass dish on the center of the table. And you may take your own and hold it up as we receive the blessing. Would our servers please come forward?
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Radiant God, with our eyes we have seen your salvation. And in this meal we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth and peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in need, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your word, eternal God, your creation sprang forth and we were given the breath of life. By your word, eternal God, death is overcome. Christ is raised from the tomb and we are given new life in the power of your spirit. May we boldly proclaim this good news in our words and our deeds, rejoicing always in your powerful presence through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we thank you for times of refreshment and peace in the course of this busy life. Grant that we may so use our leisure for the renewal of our bodies and minds, that our spirits may be opened to the goodness of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you, and then use us, we pray, as you will, but always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would you please stand as we receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We go in peace now to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 631.